I'm joined by Ian Simpson, currently playing the WPT National and doing pretty well actually at the moment. Feeling pretty good on about 290k. Now you um, qualify for a lot of these events, don't you? These are the types of tournaments you play online, the qualifiers. Absolutely, qualifiers you know, save you a lot of money, especially when you get the hotel included, which makes life a lot easier. Okay, so when you get a professional player that buys into an event and has to come out to places like this, you have to factor in all your expenses when yeah. you think about your winnings and how much it costs you to play. How does this differ then when you're actually a qualifying player as opposed to a buying straight into a tournament? Well, it just reduces all your expenses. Rather than playing, what, 1100 to buy in, three or 400 quid on the hotel, you get here for 100 euros or $100. So, you know, your expenses are a lot less, life's, life's just better. Yes, if you get through first time, well, that's the plan. That's how I work. Why, why wouldn't you get through first time? Just, well, just, know, just drill it straight away. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Come on, there must have been a time it's taking more than once to qualify. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so on those occasions, do you have a certain amount of bullets then before you give up on a tournament? No. Um, I treat every buy-in as unique. So I just forget about the past and play again. So if I've, if I've bust like five 109 tickets on party trying to get here, they don't matter anymore. But each 109 ticket's a, a brand new investment. So. Okay, and how does it? How, do, how is the differences between each tournament? In the lower levels, I'm assuming the play differs to being here today with a lot of the professional players. Uh, indeed, I mean, I've got Tony Dunst on my right today, which makes life interesting. He's a lovely guy, but he's not someone you want at your table, if that makes sense. Well, you know? this, was, this was my next question. Ah. <laughs> how is it playing next to Tony Dunst? Are we, are we sucking information from him? Are you learning something at the table? I'm trying to teach him a few things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is he learning? Is Tony learning? Nah. <laughs> You'd pick up bad habits if you learn too much from me. But I'm assuming you're now having to change your game up, knowing Absolutely. there's a pro at the table. Yeah. Um, playing a little bit more aggressively pre-flop when I do tango with him. Um, looking for spots when he's identified someone open and light. Because I think he'd probably identify the same things I have. So if someone's playing too many hands and he three bets, I can be a little bit naughty. Because I think that he's going to be just that little bit lighter. So. It yeah. must feel a little bit good when you take one down against him, just, just a little bit. It feels good winning trips to get from anyone, you know? So. Yeah, but it's just a bit more sweeter when it's Tony Dunst, surely. I guess, I guess, okay. Okay, so what's the plan of action for the rest of the day? Do you have your technique, do you have your game plan, or are you just going for it? Uh, yeah, I've got a game plan. Um, I've gotten my first two levels of any new day, I always sort of take a little bit slower just to get to know my new opponents and who's thinking, like, who's playing what kind of hands, how often they're playing hands. And once I've got an idea about what people are up to, then I can open up my game a little more if it's appropriate and hopefully get all the chips. Okay, so who are we seeing on the final table? Will it be you or will it be Tony? It could be both of us. It could be both of us, although, I don't know, when you get two players who are uh, next to each other, usually one of them goes home in a body bag, so we'll have to see. Well, let's see. Well, best of luck. I hope to see you Appreciate on that final it. table. Thank Thanks. you very much.